All right. Do we need to record too, or? Um, it should be recording. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, recording. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, it is 5.32 p.m. on March 30th, and I will call this meeting of the Public Art Ad Hoc Committee to order. Uh, we'll start with a roll call. Christopher McMorrin present. Zena Allen is absent. Uh, Ruth Kazi. Here. <clears throat> Sally Duell. Here. Jen Edwards. Present. Uh, Shar Fagerston. I'm here. Nancy Froelich. Here. Janelle LaJoy is absent, excused. And Peggy Yoder. Here. All right. So we have a quorum. And then, of course, we are joined by um, Chelsea from the city, as well as our design consultants, um, Andrea Marks and Deanne Garcia. So with that, we will move on to the adoption of our minutes from the March 9th, 2022 meeting. Are there any, uh, is there any discussion or uh, motions for these minutes? Ruth? I move that the minutes of the March 9, 2022 meeting be adopted as presented. Okay, is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. Okay, so it's moved and seconded uh, to adopt the minutes as presented. Is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, is there any opposition to that? All right, then the minutes are adopted as presented and we will move on to business for the evening, starting with a sidewalk inlays initial design presentation, which I gotta tell you, I've been looking forward to all week. So uh, <laughs> I will turn it over to either um, Chelsea or our designers, whoever's kicking us off here. Yeah, I think we can just turn it over to Andrea and Deanne. Okay, fantastic. Take us away. All right. I'm gonna, can I share my screen? Um, who's our, Chelsea, I think you're the host, right? Oh, you, you just share. I think you should be able to now. You should be okay. able to. All right. So, let me just get so I can see you all again. Okay. Can you see the presentation? Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So today we have a couple things to discuss with you. First, we're going to give you just an update on the process as a whole. Um, there's a couple of points of business we need to make sure that we are letting you in on. Then we've got two design directions that we're going to talk through and um, then let you know what the next steps are in our process. Uh, so since we met last, we, uh, Andrew and I continued our research on the biomes that we had discussed in our last meeting as being the sort of anchoring themes for each of the, um, the five designs. And we've also been working on two different directions of one of them. And we're going to be using the con mixed conifer forest as our example for you today. Um, one thing that we need to update you on here is that our conversations with the um, Grand Ronde tribe, specifically with David Harrelson, who's the culture director. Uh, we have had a, a lot of back and forth emails over the past few weeks. And um, one thing that they shared with us is that they consider their language and um, visual, any aesthetic cues to be uh, the property of the tribes. And so in order for us to use any of those symbols, we need to have a reciprocal exchange with them. They had said that there were two ways we could go about doing that. One, we could just bring on a member of the tribe as a consultant on the project. And the other would be an exchange of gifts between the city and the tribe with the tribe gifting the use of their language as their gift to the city. Um, we followed up more recently with David Harrelson to find out what might be an acceptable fee for a consultancy role in the project because we weren't totally sure exactly what that would entail and we haven't heard back it's been i think three three days since i last reached out to him um so i'm not sure what the status is of that so at some point we should discuss whether we want to keep pursuing that as an option um or not 
but um, we can continue to try to reach out. And we do have a couple other contacts. Um, I believe Robert Kenta that Ruth Kazi had co um, connected us to. We never heard back from him. So I wasn't sure, Ruth, if you had heard anything from him. No, I have not heard anything. I can try and contact him by phone if you would like me to. Okay. Um, and then David Lewis, who works at Oregon State and is a member of Grand Ronde Tribe, he had originally offered to vet the designs to make sure that we were using things appropriately. So he might be also willing to come on as a, as a consultant on this, but it does sound like it, it, there needs to be some sort of exchange in order for this to be um, kosher. So. Okay. <laughs> so we should discuss that, I guess, after we show the designs and we can show you where we're thinking this might be incorporated as well. Um, yeah, and then since then, we've also just been working on our two different directions. Uh, we've been speaking with Rich Lee of Iron Age Designs, and um, there's been a few different emails back and forth about the options for materials and finishes. And so in our last meeting, we had sort of settled on that pursuing the bronze finish with the um, patina highlights as our first choice for options it is a more expensive option, but um, will avoid the staining issues that seemed like they might actually be somewhat problematic, um, the, especially right at the beginning. Uh, and I believe Chelsea had settled on a cost with, with Rich that seemed like it was acceptable. So I don't, Chelsea, was there anything from, did he stop by this morning? He did. Yeah. I have a little bit that I'll, I'll add after I have um, kind of some of a little budget update. Um, and I did talk to Rich more extensively and I had some examples in the brochure that he gave me of, um, that I thought showed things a little bit better, um, kind of explained it. And I asked, it was, much better to talk to him in person. I was able to ask him questions and he could show me pictures while we were talking. So um, when you're finished, I can talk a little bit about that. Cool. Uh, and it, right now our designs honestly could be applied to any of the finishes. We've kind of kept them fairly agnostic in case things did change as we went along, so. All right, and then just to remind you of, of what we're using as our example here. So we, we are going to be doing five different illustrations, one for each of the five major biomes. But in order to uh, make sure we were on board with the aesthetic direction, Andrea and I have been working with the mixed conifer forest as our example. So we've been playing with illustrations that include Douglas firs, um, trilliums, mushrooms of different types, um, the barred owl, orchids and um, the image of or the silhouette of Mary's Peak as well. We also have been looking into how we can represent the timber industry as an important part of Philomath's current and past um, culture. So we've been looking at how we can incorporate sawtooth patterns or representations of, um, of lumber industry in different ways. So that's what our, um, our directions tonight are representing. All right, so option one is a more illustrative version of the um, of the design that features a, a somewhat literal representation of the creatures and the plants and animals that live in these biomes. Um, the text around the outside of this one at the moment is the Latin words, the Latin names for everything that's present in the illustration. Um, that is something that if it were able to work out with the tribe that we think could be instead substituted with something from one of the indigenous languages in the area. Um, this, yeah, this aesthetic is pretty literal, but it plays with scale in the composition. And we're just looking to highlight some of the key anchor species in the area. And then the sawtooth pattern as well lives on the outside so that it can represent um, the, the timber industry. And that is a pretty exact drawing of um, from an antique crosscut saw blade. So might not exactly represent the saw, saws that anyone would use today, but um, is representative of the crosscut saws that would have been used in the past. My grandpa had um, a collection of crosscut saws, so I was able to just go and draw directly from that. 
And then we tried to make a Photoshop mock-up here to show a little bit more what it might look like in real life because it's kind of hard when we're working, we're working in relief, but we're only able to show it to you as a two-color drawing. So the intention here would be that anything in black would be raised from the surface and anything um, not in black would sit um, recessed under this. So this is just not exact, but it, we did our best to try to make it look real in Photoshop. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> um, Andrea, do you want to show the rest? Yeah. And the next direction um, is more of an iconic one where we're using symbols. Um, it's like pattern based, more uh, abstracted symbols of, in this case, we've got the barred owl um, with also a, 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 a mushroom there called the fly agaric fungi, a calypso orchid. And uh, the Douglas fir is represented also with uh, some logs. Um, did not use a pattern on this, but that could easily be incorporated either in the background, around the edge. I added the names of the various uh, species and creatures there um, around the edge. But again, that is all up for discussion. That could also be on the kiosk where people are using the QR code and then looking at certain things. So we, we just really wanted to settle in a bit on two very different directions for you all to see that one is very sim more simplistic and one is more of an illustrative one. And then this one would look like this when it's in uh, cast. Well, it, it's, a, it's a, a rendering, I think it would look different, but it gives you an idea of like the raised surfaces and how this might look. And um, those are the two together, just to see. And um, I mean, our, our goals right now, because it's such a fast timeline, is to get some input on the directions. Hopefully, you know, tonight some discussion, and if you need some time, no problem. But um, we need to illustrate the remaining four by, um, in for two weeks in two weeks so it is a fast timeline um we, we knew that from the get-go um but um yeah that, that's that's where we're at right now awesome well thank you so much yeah we can just maybe leave that one up for a little bit um well this is fantastic we definitely have a lot to talk about um i guess i have some thoughts but i want to see if the committee has thoughts before I <clears throat> too much. Peggy, I have some some thoughts. One is uh, the owl for anybody that's lived around in Oregon, you know, for a while with the spotted owl issue. Um, I don't know if a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's not a spotted owl. That's a barred owl. <laughs> and I don't know that that was my that was my first inclination. First when we started talking about the owl, I was like, well, I wonder how that's going to play the part. I think the the owl in the iconic version where it's more playful. Um, I I tend to gravitate towards that one, the option two, even though option option one is beautiful. I I like option two, um, especially with the owl and the saw blade. Those are <laughs> Those are just two hot topics that have that have been around for quite a while. So that's 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 my great job on both of them. So, but that's my that's my opinion on it. And the, and the barred owl and the spotted owl are extremely difficult to tell apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know the sound. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sally. Uh, will you? Repeat what you said about why it was in Latin and if it's going to remain in Latin, will it say somewhere in English what it says in Latin? <laughs> I put it in Latin just as a placeholder here, um, mainly because I think that it could go in a couple different directions. We could put it in English and just say the names of the species, but it, it does leave an opportunity for us to use the Kalapuyan language or the, um, uh, what's the other? The other tribe in the area is it Alsi? The uh, Celets. Celets, yeah, uh, or use their language to um, to name the creatures if 
that ends up working out. So it's kind of there just as a placeholder. Okay. Well, it looks great. I couldn't do design anything like this if my life depended on it. So <laughs> you did a good job. Yeah, very nice. I guess my question maybe for the committee, um, like I think my sort of personal sensibilities are drawn more towards option two, um, but just thinking in terms of the entire downtown streetscapes project, um, which one do we think will fit in best with, you know, the sidewalks and the benches and the bike racks, which is another thing we need to talk about tonight, but maybe so not don't think about the bike racks, just the <laughs> sidewalks, the lampposts, the benches, all the things that are already sort of determined, because um, I do think it's important that we have some sort of, you know, unifying characteristic, I guess, do we have any thoughts about that? Shar? Okay, <laughs> sorry, I hope my internet doesn't cut out here. Um, I had the same kind of thoughts you just expressed, Christopher, where, like, personally, I am super drawn to the second one. I think it's so playful and fun and creative and engaging. And I feel like I would actually stop and engage a little bit longer with that second design because it is a little more interpretive. Um, and the first one is very literal. Um, that being said, the first one is also very well done and does have a lot to engage with. And I love the idea of having the, the wording around it in a native language, if possible. Mm -hmm. um, thinking about Philomath as a whole, it seems like the past up to right now would be more of the first one. And then my question in conjunction with that is, are we trying to remain in the space that Philomath is right now? Or is this an opportunity to maybe take a little baby step forward <laughs> and um, bring in a little bit more modern? Because Philomath does want to continue progressing and part of the whole downtown revamp is to get people engaged again and to get people um, moving, you know, like gravitating toward Philomath as a destination place. And so I'm just wondering, and I, I don't have a strong vote one way or the other yet. Um, seems like option one is very much like, if we wanna, if the, the whole theme of the Philomath downtown streetscape is to hearken everything back to the past, then definitely the first one. If we're trying to maybe honor the past, look at the present and take a little step forward, then I think the second option would represent that a little bit better. Thank you. And then I see Nancy's hand. Um, I agree with what Char just said. And I, you know, I'm still taking it all in because there's there's like, they're good job in doing two very different things. <laughs> so it's like spinning on both fronts. Um, one thing I really do enjoy about the second one is it doesn't matter where you stand and look down, you feel like you're in the right spot. Whereas yeah. the other one definitely yeah. has like, you know, an orientation. Um, so that's I forgot to mention that in my presentation, that was <laughs> actually, I, my, it's sp I spaced out and that was purposeful that um, to turn the symbols in all directions so people could read them any way as they walked. That Very was, nice. Yeah. And another thing I thought of, and I don't know if kids still do this, but like rubbings, like with newsprint, mm -hmm. um, the second one really lends to like a cool like pattern, like you could do a rubbing on it and collect all the different illustrations. I don't know if people still do that, but the first one would be a little more tricky um, with rubbings because you have to get the whole shebang. Um, I do like that the icons can then um, be taken from the pattern and be used in different ways for other things. I know we're not talking about the bike rack, um, but maybe the kiosk or, you know, some other Philoma pamphlets. I don't know. It just seems like there's an opportunity to use them in different ways than just all, you know, always as a pattern. Um, and, and as far as it working with 
all the other pieces that are the components of the streetscape, the lamp poles, the benches and everything. I don't know, they're, they're icons, they're pretty simple. So I don't, I don't see a collision there, but it does look a little Scandinavian, you know, like a little more contemporary modern. Yes. It's not gritty and you don't see the hand in it, like how it was rendered as much as you do with the first one. So I'm, I don't know what I'm saying exactly because I'm still processing it all, but um, yeah. I think I like the second one. <laughs> so I'm done. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, this, uh, I, I'm enjoying this conversation. I, it, you guys are really great clients. Uh, uh, Deanne and I have said this uh, repeatedly <laughs> since the start of this project. Um, I designed that uh, new museum logo for the Philomath Museum downtown with another, uh, another designer. And we had similar conversations. We were taking the old museum, the cupola, the drawing of the museum or the uh, historical um, a museum down in Philomath and then updating it quite dramatically. And I remember showing that logo to the board of the Philomath Museum, which was a board made up of, you know, people who had lived in Philomath for decades and decades. And uh, yeah, I was really nervous because it was so abstract. It's that red box that's open, you know, slightly. Um, and they, they were willing and interested in moving away from that traditional illustration of the building. And I know it's for a modern building downtown here in Corvallis, but I think there's something to be said about um, bringing in kind of maybe a new a new visual language that isn't what has always been as you move forward with uh, Philomath becoming more of a, a destination, which it seems to be. Yeah, thank you. Um, Char? <laughs> okay, I think Nancy brought up another important consideration, which is um, that have like being able to pull out the simplistic elements of it that could be reused on in so many different ways especially you know if it wanted to be a I mean we're talking about repeating some of these designs in different elements of the streetscape so I think pulling one of those design elements out and putting it on the bike racks or you know I mean like I think it is something that could be incorporated in a lot of different ways and help provide the, the continuity that I think we're, we're trying to get with all of the different elements, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't, I feel like there's maybe one or two people we haven't heard from any, any input. If you haven't shared yet, it's totally fine. If not, of course, I just want to make sure we, um, yeah, Jen. Um, yeah, it's funny because when we were first starting this, I was really drawn to the illustrative, but through the discussion, I'm now leaning more towards the iconic through people listening to people's reactions to it and the, the futuristic aspects, but still touching to the, yeah, so I, and I like the idea, like the other people were saying, well, yeah, and you can stand anywhere and you get the same view versus, yeah, so yeah, I've definitely been switched. That makes any sense based on people's arguments. So, okay. Well, look at that. We're getting something done. And then, Ruth? <laughs> um, I think they're both incredibly beautiful, really, really wonderful work. Um, but I too am drawn to the second one. I think it just looks more fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's good to hear. Said I. You know, I just, I got to say, Nancy, I'll call on you in just a second, but I love chairing this committee because we do often seem to get along and agree on this. And it's always nice to chair that type of a committee. So I just want you all to know I appreciate that. Um, Nancy? Um, I haven't lived in, I live in Wren, so I don't live in Philomath proper. Um, and I'm not like trying to like bring up drama, but I'm curious if those of you that have lived in Plumouth for a long time or know people that have, like, would they have any complaints about the second one? Like, do you see any, like, 
reason for anybody to be offended or upset or <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to think of like what what could be the worst thing that would happen? I mean, what I do like is like the owls and the trees and the flowers and stuff. They're not going to complain about us stepping on them. You know, it's all like imagery that's like totally fine. We're not offending anyone. Um, so that's, that's great. But I was just curious if anyone had any thoughts. Uh, Chelsea? Um, yes, I just wanted to kind of add to that, that we, you are thinking about the whole community and just I know a big job <laughs> um, and just a reminder of that that you know think of the all the elements all of the um, festivals and things that happen here and what draws people here and what kinds of groups are um, you know prominent here not that that sways it either way but it, it is good to just kind of stop and think about it as a, not just the downtown area we're very focused on looking at the downtown area it is Philomath as a whole. Yeah. Uh, Ruth? Um, I might just suggest that, um, you know, in the past we talked about having something in the kiosk with additional information or um, things that you could connect to through your smartphone. And it seems to me like that would give us an opportunity to provide more information about the species, a scientific name, um, maybe how it was used, if it was used by the native communities and just, just expand on what's here because um, I guess the one criticism I might see is people would look at it and think, well, it's too simplistic. You know, what do you, what do you learn from this? What does this tell you about the area except these things occur here? Um, so that would be my thought, but I think that could easily be addressed um, in other media through the kiosk. Great, and then Shar? Um, just like at first glance, if I was going to choose one that I thought Philomath would choose, it would definitely be the first option. Um, and the second one feels more like Corvallis. Yes. <laughs> um, like, if, I think that if you were going to put the two up side by side in the community and say, vote, I think Philomath would vote for the first one. Um, that being said, they just did the redesign for the rodeo logo thing. And that is like super <laughs> my take on the rodeo which has been here i mean like that's the thing in philomath you know and they didn't they didn't stay back in a in a this is how it's always been like they really like i was when i saw the rodeo logo i said whoa i would never have thought that they would have voted on that for philomath like that was my reaction to it because it did seem very more like a lot more modern than it was and so like I'm truly not settled on one or the other because I think that in my consideration, it comes down to, well, what is the desired outcome? And, you know, is it, is the main consideration, do we want this to be the most pleasing to the longtime residents of Philomath? Do we want this to be engaging to all residents of Philoma, you know, like, I, I think it almost feels, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not settled on one or the other. Like to me, they're, they're both really beautiful, really well done. Very, very, um, I think either could be chosen. And if nobody knew what the other one was, that it would be loved. You know, so like, I think if we chose the one that is more modern or whatever, and nobody saw the, the more um, illustrative design, they wouldn't know what they were missing, you know? <laughs> and I think if we chose the illustrative one and not the modern one, no one would know what they were missing. And, and they're both so well done that either one would be great. But I think they're just touching on two very different sides of the spectrum, which I love. Um, and there's just a lot to consider with that. 
Yeah, um, just, I'm gonna just before I get to the two of you, um, I think also like I completely agree with everything Shar said. That I do think number one is the more crowd pleaser. Um, I think number two to sort of respond to Nancy's question, um, I I could see some just like jokes about it of like oh they just like splattered different like you know they put a bunch of clip art on a circle and called it art or something um that just seems like the most likely sort of just knowing some you know some folks in Philomath they like to make comments about things uh, <laughs> so I just could see that be, whereas I think number one no one would like love it to death but no one would hate it um whereas I could see number two some people thinking it's really ugly um I don't think anyone here does but I do think it's something to think about um and maybe maybe no one would but i could see that being more of a, a, a thing than number one um so yeah and then i guess just the other part of it as char said um number two it just really does make me think of like corvallis for some reason um and i think part of that is just corvallis's sort of like civic imagery in general is a lot more of that style like their parks and rec logo is very sort of iconography and it has like the little like waves and the you know leaves um whereas philomaths is like you know the museum or like a horseshoe um so i guess my only concern is i want to i want to keep in mind that we are not here to design the city of philomath right now like those choices have already been made for the entire streetscapes project um so i think our job is to just sort of make sure that we're doing that within um what has already been decided and maybe we decide number two works for that i just want to sort of keep us from creeping our scope out too much um so that was sort of a rambling thing but go ahead chelsea um so i am 100 taking these words from rich lee from iron age designs who i met with earlier um and he said something that really stuck with me and he said it's you're not just creating something to look at, you're creating place so that you're creating the place. You're, um, it, it, it's not just, we could put anything there to look at, but, but what are we doing to create that space and, and that place, the downtown area? And it, I don't know if it will resonate with other people, but it did um, resonate with me. And then Sally? Well, I was just going to say that the illustrative is kind of traditional, and that was my first choice. And then I heard the comments about the iconic, and that's more whimsical. And I, I'm so wishy-washy. I keep going back and forth, and I think I like one, and then I hear this other side of it. So, our and my real question is: Are are we voting on this tonight? Yeah, I mean, we are, oh. we have to give them some Great. direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Dinner's going to be late here at the house. <laughs> um, and then Andrea, did you have a comment on that? Yeah. Um, I just, I, I want to go back. I, I think, um, again, either will work, but I do feel that the second one would, you could pull those icons out as Nancy started saying we did into a lot of different uh, ways that I think could be quite creative and not like over the top modern, just really sort of, you know, create sort of a bit of a brand, you know, for this streetscape and not to be super slick and New York with it, but just, it starts to build, the visual pieces start to build a visual language and then an identity. So that's my, my two cents on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Peggy? I was wondering if, um, well, all the, it, depending on which one we choose, will all of the inlays kind of follow suit or is there going to be uh, a mixture? It sounds like um, what you just said was that it, it, we're going to kind of follow suit with the iconic and the rest of the designs will kind of follow that suit instead of having a, a mixture. Is that, is that accurate? That is our thought on this, that it would be one visual language for all of the five different designs. And then they there would be 10, so five different designs. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. I still, like, I still like the iconic, personally. Um, I'm still not big on the owls. I actually wouldn't mind hearing what 
other people, maybe I'm blowing the owls out of proportion. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing what other people's thoughts on the owls are. I know that it's, it's, it's night. We, you know, we want some wildlife in there. Um, if whether they think that we're going to be digging up uh, some more controversy, I'd just be interested to see how, what others might think. Um, I guess, Chelsea, was that in response to Peggy? Yes. Um, okay. Well, I think, you know, the owl is on this and it's maybe causing a little bit of a hang up. There are four other designs. So that's part of it. It's not like this would be all that you would see um, if you were plastering that all over. Maybe if that were an issue, it might be really in people's faces. Um, but it is just one part of the design. I don't think that they intend to put owls on the others. I assume that there would be other woodland creatures. Um, and so that's one thing to keep in mind, um, you know, just from that perspective. Yeah. And then, okay, we got several hands. Ruth, were you responding to Peggy or? Yes, I was just going to say that um, the only or the owl that I've seen close up here in the area um, was a barred owl. Unfortunately, there was someone nearby who actually knew what it was. Um, so I kind of had the soft spot in my heart for barred owl. So I didn't see it as controversial at all. Yeah. Um, I guess I kind of agree. I don't, it's also not like we're showing, at least from what I see, we're not showing like that owls are more important than timber, that timber is more important than owls. We're just showing an owl and we're showing a tree. Um, so I guess it doesn't seem like we're trying to <laughs> take a stance on something. Okay, cool. But yeah. And then Nancy, sorry. Uh, sorry, I don't have any strong feelings about the owl. Can I, yes, can, please. I, can, I yeah. can I talk about something else? Please do. <laughs> Not that it isn't important. I just I don't I don't know enough about that. Um, what I did want to just uh, say or ask questions about is like if the patterns like just pretend that we choose number two, I know we're not there yet, but if we were, um, would the patterns for the other ones be this same, um, only way I can think to describe it is like weight or will they, will the icons take on different scales? Like, you know, like feel a little bit more open or be more dense. Um, and then my next thought was like, could there be a few more um, different icons even within this pattern? So then it becomes more of like a store, is it a, so when you look at it, it's like, oh, is this a story or is this a pattern or is it both? Like there's enough elements within it that it feels maybe like there's um, more, I don't know. I, I mm -hmm. Just hearing what people were saying about, you know, negative comments that the community could have, um, you know, maybe if there was more varied icons, then it feels like more than just a pattern. I don't know. But that's good, all. Good, good point. Um, I don't know if Dean and I, I don't feel, I kind of don't feel like we've, we've gone to that step yet because we were going to see what everybody, what, what everybody was thinking tonight. And then, um, and in our minds and Dean, correct me if, if, if I'm miss, misspeaking this, but, um, you know, if, if for instance, number two was chosen, I, th I think we'd have a discussion and we'd sit down and, and think about conceptually, like, what should the other other four be like with these icons should should scale change could could scale change could things be um slightly different and still feel unified with the whole so i think that conversation if if that iconic one was chosen would happen for deanne and i is that correct deanne yeah yeah and it, as we were working through these we were talking together about things like the the weight of the line work in the icons and having them be unified in certain ways. So it should be very possible for us to have a bit of variance throughout in terms of layout and composition while still maintaining enough unity so that they feel part of a system. I think the systemic um, nature of the second one is definitely an advantage for it because it does become like, rather than designing five compositions, it's designing a, a single system that can then be applied in in different ways if if necessary. So there's there's more 
there's more that could be done with it. Whereas the illustrative one, those sort of stand alone. Mm -hmm. And I'll add that I didn't, I didn't show, I didn't make this point, but there is a division of almost five areas with the lines, the longer lines in number two, that are sort of the five biomes. Um, the story isn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean like one, but one area is pine cones, one is, they're, they're all mixed in the forest, but because we have five different inlays, I thought of the just bringing in five different sort of segments. Um, if, if you could see that, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think you can see my pointer, but um, yeah, you, you, you can, you know what I'm saying. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think that personally, I would be then sort of in favor of, it seems like we're all drawn a little bit more towards option two. So then maybe if we can change the discussion to how, is there any way that we can sort of make sure that option two is the best it can be um, and try to anticipate any community criticism now? <laughs> um, like any anything we can give our artists to work on as we move forward. Shar? Uh, just one thing that I'm observing between the two different designs is the, the illustrative one it um, with the sawtooth edge and then the, the type around it, there's not as much, um, empty space there and yeah I, I think i um sorry am i still here <laughs> <laughs> okay. um i i like it a little more closed in it, i feel like with the the illustrative design um either the design could be larger or um text and created in it even, or, you know, it, it just feels like there's a little bit of a blank space, which that's fine. Blank space is, is an element of design, but um, maybe a more intentional one. And I don't know. I mean, I don't, I love the idea of having the, the native language incorporated if possible. And I know that's still an if, if possible. And I don't know if it would fit also the more modern design as well because i think that is such a big like hook back to to history and uh hey we're we're bringing everybody together forward together like you know we our history brought us together we're still moving forward together and i i just i would love to see still a representation of the tribes if possible um even in a in a modern design especially in a modern design you know, so if there was some way to to bring that element in, I would, I think that would maybe help appease the concerns that Christopher is <laughs> is uh, sure we will come up against. So. <laughs> yes, um, Chelsea. Um, I was just going to suggest that even if it doesn't end up in this design, I think there's um, a lot of possibility for what is designed um, to talk about the inlays. So if there's a pamphlet or, you know, something up at the kiosk that you can look at uh, informational, that even if you don't directly see it here, I mean, th this is a representation of what's here, what's been here, um, even the iconic is, and it's not just futuristic. And so that is something that could be maybe incorporated the, the the language and everything. So if you're explaining this um, particular inlay for mixed conifer forest, you know, that we could work with um, the tribes to get some of their language in there, maybe some text that um, seems relevant to them to have in there. Yeah, I guess I have two thoughts that are kind of conflicting. So apologies in advance. But um, first thought, just I also agree about the I think there may be a little too much blank sort of negative space on the iconic option. It might be good to fill it up a little bit. Um, and one thought I have then is there is sort of that strip of blank underneath the text, like in between the circle and the text. Um, so you could almost put like the English name and then you could also put like a Native American name underneath it or something. However, um, my only concern with putting Native American names is that there, there isn't a Native American language. There's like, you know, a thousand. 
um, and many of which were all spoken here at various points in time. So how do we sort of prioritize what is Native American for um, the purposes of this project, I guess, is my, I, I, my only sort of hesitation with that. And also, I don't know, I just I have some concerns about like, using just the language and nothing else. But I think if we had someone from the tribe as an advisor, I'd be more comfortable with that. Um, I just, I am sort of hesitant of a few of those aspects of it. But Deanne? Actually, I was going to say something on similar lines. Um, one of the concerns that David Harrelson from the Grand Ronde tribe had brought up was that there's something like 14 different languages just within the Kalapuya peoples. Right. <laughs> and there are no native speakers left. So it, they, everything is very piecemeal. They have phrases and they have bits of the language that are preserved well, but um, they may not be able to say like a one-to-one, -one, like a barred owl is this. So we had also talked briefly about like maybe there are phrases or um, sayings or something that could go over it that might relate in some way that then could be translated. So it's not just literally naming, but actually telling more of a story. Um, but that was something we were hoping to talk with David Harrelson about when uh, we hear back from him. Great. Um, I guess the one other comment, I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot, just to go back to um, something that Andrea said, I think in my ideal world, if I ran everything, I am so game for the idea of just using this iconography all over the city. You know, like let's have there be like a little pine cone and at every park and let's have, you know, there be like a little owl on the side of every police car. I'm not saying that's actually a good idea, but I, I do really like that idea. Um, I think my only concern about that is we don't make those decisions. So how, if that is our intent and our hope, how do we sort of, you know, convey that to the city council or the city manager and be like, by the way, you have all these great resources. If you want to sort of engage on this larger, you know, city branding opportunity, um, it just, I know that, you know, it can be difficult to break out of our box into another box. Um, so that's my only concern sort of with that or not concerned but just to make sure the committee's all on the same page with understanding we can't go and redesign you know the parks logo or the public works logo or anything i don't even know if we have logos for those in Paloma, but we just write public works on the sign uh, <laughs> but sorry i'm done now nancy uh nuts and bolts question about typeface used um, is that something that uh, the city would need to purchase and just being mindful of what typeface or the cost of it? Um, I guess that question is for... You would not need to purchase this one. Um, okay. It's one that's included for Andrea and I in our Creative Cloud subscription. So as long as the, um, which honestly you don't need to know that, but the, <laughs> basically if the designer has uh, the right to it, then we can include it. So it's more about whether the designer awesome. has it than the client. Awesome. Char? Uh, bringing up your point, Christopher, about talking to the city, I feel like the response would be, we just spent all of this time and effort deciding on a brand, which is Timbertown. And uh, I feel like if we're going to be true to that, it would be the first, the first design, even if everybody else likes the second one. Because if the city wants it to be timber town and it's historic and it's woodsy and it's flannel and it's plaid and, and dusty and all the things Philomath is, I, I feel like the first one would be the one that if you put both of them in front of the city council or everybody that that uh, came up with the Timbertown theme, they would all choose the first one. I do. That I think is an important perspective. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> um, oh boy, okay. Uh, Can I ask something, Christopher? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Chelsea, go ahead. Not to put you on the spot, Ruth, but you know, this the designs will be going to the city council um, mm -hmm. at some point. And do you have any 
thoughts on that, on Cher's statement related to that? Well, I think, I think that Timbertown is a theme um, more than um, something that's going to dominate the entire city landscape. And I really like Chris's idea. I don't think we have any icons for police or public works or anything. Um, at least not that comes to mind. We have, we have the city seal, you know, which is more traditional and more similar to the illustrative piece. But I also think that, you know, people are willing to move forward and they are willing to change. I'd like to, I'd like to believe they're fairly open-minded, um, <laughs> but maybe they're not. <laughs> Um, but I would certainly, I certainly lean toward the second one. I mean, it, you have to give them both some thought and consideration as we have, because my initial, um, initially I was more attracted to the first one, um, because it is very traditional, but, you know, I think the second is much more interesting, but much more versatile. And I guess just as a clarification for Chelsea about how we're presenting this to the city council, are we just going to be giving them our top choice and being like, this is what we want? Or are we going to be basically having this entire conversation again with them? Um, no, the intent is that as the committee, you're going to go through this process, make your recommendation with the hope that they're you know, going to know that that's what you were put in place to do and that you've gone through all this time and effort um to do this i do intend to um try to make sure that they're updated up through the process so like th this slideshow i'm going to see if um the city manager can send it out to the city council just so that they can see what's going on so that if there were anything that was going to come up that seemed you know like an overwhelming amount of counselors said wait a minute that we would know that right away Okay. Um, and then I'm not, is it Peggy next, I think? I just, just quickly, you know, um, I pretty much agree with what, what Ruth has said. I was, I was at the farmer's market, you know, uh, talking to folks when it comes to the voting. And even though Timbertown was selected, it wasn't so much, I didn't get the feeling that it had to be all just traditional. I mean, I really didn't. So Matt, that might, uh, you know, ease some of Char's um, concern too, that, uh, and it just wasn't all saw blades, you know, that I, it's, it was just a, like Ruth has said, it was just a theme and that we are sticking with, with everything else. So yeah, that's it. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, and then Char, did, did you still have your hand up for a new thing or? Okay, <laughs> then Nancy. <laughs> Although I will say, I am glad to hear that the feedback was a lot more open-minded than, than yes. not. That's good. good. Hearing that. And then, sorry, Nancy, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I'm talking too much. No, no, no. Um, uh, the way that I was introduced to the streetscape project was at the farmer's market and they had a little kiosk set up and they had like a bunch of pictures of different uh, lampshades over here and then benches over here. And then basically it was like, what is the community drawn to? Like what aesthetic and style? And um, you got your own sticky note. I don't know if any of you participated in this and you just put your sticky yeah. note next to the style that you like. And I was, we were there late in the day. So a lot of people had already put their opinion down and I was pleasantly shocked that it was all the sort of definitely using wood and metal, you know, like raw materials, but the more contemporary, simple aesthetic was definitely hands down being chosen. Now it still like has like an edge of rustic to it, but it was, you know, the most contemporary simple designs were the ones getting the votes over the option of things that were more ornate and detailed and more country looking, I would say. So just my, my experience with the seeing what the community was drawn to. No, this is all very good to know. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Chelsea? Um, 
Yes, I just want to agree with Nancy. The designs that were chosen, I mean, the the light poles do have wood and metal, but they're kind of a clean, modern um, timber sort of look. And, um, you know, there's a lot of the kind of more matte black, like the benches, the, the trash receptacles. So they do have a little bit of a more modern touch. Great. Okay. Um, just we are at 627, so we should probably uh, make a decision or if we want to extend the meeting quite a bit, we can, but um, it feels like we're close to a decision. Um, Char? So my, just a point of clarification. If So after we make a final decision, uh, there will be one more conversation about about the design or like before yeah. going with all of them? Yeah, so we would, we this, all we're doing tonight is sort of picking the direction we wanna go. Um, and then once we pick that direction, then the artists will make the other four designs and probably, you know, workshop this one a little bit um, with that direction. And then we will see all of those at a future meeting um, and we can give any feedback or just be like, yeah, that looks great. Um, and then all five of those will go to the city council for their final sign off. Um, yeah. Ms. Chelsea, am I missing anything in there? Um, no, that's correct. And um, I think that to me, it sounds like you're all on the same page. Do you want to try to take some sort of a, a vote to, to see where people are. And then I know there were a couple of suggestions. So if you do end up going with the iconic, um, we just want to make sure that Andrea and Deanne are clear that you as a committee would like to see a little bit less negative space, maybe pull the design out, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll just go ahead then and I'll make a motion. So I'll, I move that we, um, recommend that the artists follow option two, um, the iconic type uh, for the five designs. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to go with option two. Um, is there any discussion on that? Okay. Then um, all those in favor, if you can just raise your hand. Okay, that looks unanimous. So there we go. We made a decision. Go team. Um, <laughs> I guess just on the note that Chelsea brought up, are there any other points we want to just make sure that Andrea and Deanne are aware of sort of before we move on to our next agenda item? We've talked about maybe, you know, making there be a little less empty space, um, maybe, you know, working on some of the text, but Ruth? Um, just two things that... Um, were raised previously. One is linking to additional information in the kiosk, perhaps, yeah. which may, may not impact the design at all. Um, and the other would be perhaps, as you suggested, attempting to incorporate native language. And I know that you said there's, there are multiple languages, so that may be problematic. Um, but I wonder if... Uh, well, I wonder if we can continue to pursue that and see if that will work, um, maybe for the mixed conifer forest for a broader term like that. I wonder if yeah. it would be easier to come up with a native term. And I guess my thought on that would be, it would be great if we could figure that out. If we can't figure it out in time, then I feel like that might be something that could also go in the kiosk since we have more yeah. time for that, but yeah. Absolutely. Nancy? All right, um, nitpicking. Um, the tree next to the logs gets a little tight and I don't know if it's just the orientation of uh, the way that you photoshopped it and looking at an angle, but it starts to get a little bit um, jumbled to me. Just, oh, there we go. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I think now, if we go in this direction, I think Deanne and I are going to take a, a real hard look at, at okay. the elements and the compositions. I mean, we did take time with these, but we also didn't know other co what comments would come from the right. committee. So I, I think we'd agree on those two in particular are, are kind of mushed together that 
reflective ones of the tree and the log. Yeah, it's just it's just yeah. that the logs are so they have a lot of um, info, you know, they have yeah. a lot of lines and circles, and so it's hard to see them. And also, I'm not sure if I'm loving the the lines throughout, and if they mm -hmm. have like a a significance to you, you know, my mind can be changed, but they, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Sometimes they were, they were originally conceived to sort of divide, uh, divide sections, uh, like sort of a, a oh, right. five, five sections, um, like the five biomes. But mm -hmm. again, I think we will look, we'll examine those two, okay. whether they're, they're necessary or they should be lighter or thinner or whatever. Um, I guess I just have, while I, while I have the mic real quick, uh, Chris, is, is it possible that, or Chelsea, we design the other four, we present them to you, you present them to the council and they don't like them at all. And then, I mean, should they see one first? Well, or? and that's why I'd like to send this out. So if you can send this presentation to me, I would like to send it out so that we can get some little mini updates. Um, just that, you know, the art committee met, here's what they reviewed. This is the direction they're going. They're working just really as informational, but if some, if an, enough of them, it couldn't just be probably one person, but if enough of them were saying, wait a minute, we would need to stop and have a conversation with the council um, on that because we don't want to do this whole design and get all the finished designs and have them say no. I mean, the, the intent is that by the time we get there, they know what direction you're going in. I try to keep updated with minutes and things, but this is a very visual um, process. And like you said, we're on a short timeline. So um, that that's my intent is just to make sure that people are in the loop. Um, so if anyone does have something to say, we can try to uh, get that feedback, you know, very quickly. Yeah. Also, um, is there any opposition to extending our meeting to 645 just so we can get to our next agenda item too? Fantastic. Okay. Uh, then Char? Just briefly, I, I was going to say, I don't think that the um, multiple languages of all of the tribes needs to be a sticking point. It, I mean, it could be a conversation point, you know, it could be um, like, I didn't know there were that many languages within each tribe. So I don't, I don't see any problem at all if different languages were used on different what you know and I don't know how that's going to translate typographically and all of that so um but I, I don't think it would be any problem at all to have multiple different languages even on one circle and to just you know it's more of a, a connection point in my view of you know oh I don't know what that says where can I find out oh guess what you know I, I think it's a another opportunity to kind of to to connect and link yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Deanne? Uh, on a similar similar note, um, I think the kiosk is going to be a really key um, component to this because it will offer a chance to sort of show the complexities there. Because one, one concern that I think David Lewis and David Harrelson both had had when we initially contacted them was, will the language just feel like it's an add-on for no reason? Like it's just a Right. A reductionist sort of like nod that doesn't mean anything more deeply and so I, I really think it'll be important when the kiosk project comes up to kind of make sure that it it's uh spoken of with a lot of complexity so that it feels like it's represented um in a really respectful way yeah absolutely um well great are there any other final sort of notes we want to give Andrea and Deanne. Nancy? Last thing, typing on a curve. I know it's a nightmare, but I do think it works better with caps. I don't know about, I mean, I like the scale change with the lowercase, but I don't know, just wanted to put that out there just to think about. And I don't know how you felt about when you're designing it, caps versus no caps. I think we're totally open, Nancy, to that. Uh, I, I chose all uppercase for the name of the biome. And then, yeah. um, but again, we don't know even what exactly will go around there, but I, I, I know what you're saying. And probably in this context, it could be, it could be good to go all uppercase. Yeah. And you could just change the, 
point size and have it still be caps or mm -hmm. you have a hierarchy shift. Sure. I don't know. I don't dislike it. I just yeah. wanted to. No, I think you're right. I mean, with, you know, the descenders and ascenders are, it, I know it's, it's not as clean. Yeah. It's a tricky thing. I've always hated it. <laughs> Trying to make it look good is a challenge for sure. All right. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much for all of that. Um, any final comments then? Okay, great. Any final questions that our artists have for us before we um, move on to our next agenda item? Or do you have, do you feel comfortable with the information we've given you tonight? Is there anything else you might need? No, this is great discussion. Really yep. appreciate everybody's input. Great team. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, You're the easiest city committee. Great. <laughs> Good. Can we? Yeah, this is being recorded, yeah. right, Chelsea? It is recorded. Okay. Good. Good. Um, <laughs> all right. So then we will go ahead and move on to the next item on our agenda, which is our budget update and bike racks. And Chelsea will lead us through that. So I'm going to start with bike racks. Um, I did email all of you and ask for input, and I heard back from everyone, and um, all nearly all of you said that you would like to work with um, Andrea and Deanne for bike rack design. Um, and so I did email them earlier and ask, so this is not, they, they have been given a heads up on this <laughs> earlier today. Um, and so we also just got put in a pretty significant time crunch for the bike rack design. Uh, I do believe that we have possibility to have more than one design, especially if it were something um, relatively simple, which now that you've gone with this iconic um, look that I think becomes even more possible um, to, to do that. Um, and so I don't know what that looks like for you, Andrea and Deanne, but um, we, we can talk about um, if the committee would maybe like to see a couple of different designs um, if that's possible, uh, we don't need to get crazy and have a whole bunch. And I don't want to make it so much work that it becomes something that it isn't possible, especially with the sidewalk inlays um, going on as well. Uh, like I said, I do think that there's a little bit of wiggle room. I know what our landscape designer really, really wants. Um, if I had something very close to what the design will be. So if, if I even knew here's what it will look like and then you can put a placeholder they have to turn something in with these plans that are that's going to ODOT um and so if we if we just generally know this is how it's generally going to look and we're kind of um you know getting down to the specifics of it as we're moving on a little bit I think that that we can manage that um so that being said is that something that you both feel like you can add into this project? Especially given this direction. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, are, I have a, a quick question. Are we, are these going to be sort of like staples with like a panel or? Yes. Is there so they're um, an arched bike rack with a panel um, in the middle. And so I did send, I think you got the link as well. Did I send you the bike rack links? I don't know if I sent those to you. If I didn't, I will. Um, and the one consideration in designing that Peggy brought up and also came up in some of my research is with these panel designs, you need to, to have space in them and not just be a panel with a whole bunch of little intricate things because then you can't um, run a cable through that part and it gets it can affect how you're locking up your bike essentially. Um, so that's a consideration that um, I can send you. I found a little bit of information about that. Um, I can send that to you tomorrow or today. Even. Yeah. And uh, Chelsea, just do you know how many we're going to have? Like, because just the thought that popped in my head is like, if we're going to have four, then we could just pull out one icon from each of, sure. or I guess they're making five, but like, you know, four or five, we can just pull out like an icon from each design and then that makes it quick and easy. Um, I do have that answer. It's buried in some plans, <laughs> but let me see if I can pull it up. Um, yeah, okay. While you're while we're here, 
yeah, I guess, is there any, I feel like we're all kind of already on the same page with it. Is anyone really opposed to just pulling out some icons from these designs to use on the bike racks? I feel like we talked about that briefly at a previous meeting, so. <laughs> Does that sound good to everyone? Kind of as a direction to go. <laughs> you know, Peggy, you had mentioned maybe just keeping it simple and not having any designs. I, I do think that going in this direction kind of allows us to maybe keep it simple and still have a design. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, um, let me, we can email a little bit, Deanne and Andrea, and, and just do a little brainstorming and I can get that out to the committee and, and we can try to move this along outside of the meeting to get you some direction. Does that sound good? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Okay. Okay. I will just say the one that I'm thinking of that could be kind of fun on a bike rack too is the one of the tree with the logs because I feel like then that fits in with the timber town as well. Um, but I'm not the one actually designing things, so I'll keep that to myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so then, did you want to talk about budget stuff, Chelsea? <clears throat> yeah, we can. And Andrea and Deanna, if you want to drop off, I think we're substantially done with our conversation for you if you want to, or you're welcome to stay. I don't want to hold you any longer than needed. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so for much really for good direct feedback. It was great. Yeah, Very helpful. great job. Yes, we look forward to seeing everything else you come up with. So thank you for all your work. <laughs> okay. Can everyone see my screen? <laughs> okay. Um, so I did a little breakdown. I know a lot of you have asked about budget. Where Where is the budget? What is the budget? It's a little complex because it's there's a very large budget for this project. And these little pieces are things that were thrown in as things that would be done as part of the project. Um, we do have the landscape architect firm has some estimates that they kind of gathered as they were doing the project the process, what's a little complicated is when they went th forward with their budget, it includes the ODOT related um, items. So we have a few things that are not, we have a few things that are, you know, even the inlays, they're part ODOT and part city because we're buying them and having them designed, but we're paying ODOT to install them. So it's a little complex, but I thought this would help a little bit. And I know you'd ask about the bronze versus the iron. Um, I did show there's a $11,000 difference between the two metals. Bronze is very expensive right now. Um, I put the cost per inlay because I think that kind of shows that they're not that far off. I mean, we're making a decision to put something in permanently. Um, and I did um, talk to Rich today from Iron uh, Age Designs, and he, he made a lot more sense out of the... Um, the cast iron, I just, I got a lot more explanation from him. So there's the baked oil finish, which you saw that's darker. And what that's really for, it's not permanent. It does not stay on the iron long-term. It's, um, it's intended to kind of protect it as it's going through the early oxid oxidization um, process. And so it can make things look a little yet less bright orange. There's, it still looks orange, maybe just not quite as bright orange. It can um, result in a little less um, pooling, you know, of the, the minerals, things like that, uh, the staining, but it doesn't eliminate it. And, and it's not an exact science. Um, it's, it's really fascinating how Rich has all of these things installed all over. And even he was going up to Portland for a meeting and he said, oh, this, this one I show you, I have to stop by and see where it's at now. So he checks on them. He goes back, you know, years later and, and takes pictures to see where are these things? How have they changed over the years? So it's, it's really fascinating. But I think for the concerns that you had, um, th that that's, it's going to be there. Um, they're, they're going to be some level of orange. They're going to be running off doing their natural thing. If people throw ice melt out in front of their business, that's going to impact it as well and impact how the minerals are traveling. Um, whereas the bronze doesn't have that, um, and, but it does have some interesting things about it. He showed me some where people 
had walked across them and where they walk, you know, we use, it gets shinier and has that different patina from what's going on on the edges where it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, so both of them are beautiful, but I did just want to show you because I know that you've asked um, where, you know, how much are they? What's the comparison? And then I also put, uh, we, I don't have a price for the kiosk at this point. I know that it was something that um, they talked about getting maybe some donations and someone's volunteered to try to build that. Um, and then the plinths, again, I think that's a, a discussion to be had. What do, what do we see happening with the plinths? I know that there are several options that cities do, um, getting items on loan, things like that. Um, and the bike racks, that includes the ODOT installation that was from DLA. So uh, I think they said they're around $400 each um, just to, to buy them. Um, and I think the interior ones that are not designed are, are a little bit less than that. Does, does anyone have any questions or comments about this? Thank you, Ruth. Oh, I just think, um, I think the price, the cost per inlay seems quite reasonable. And I think, you know, the bronze is definitely more, but um, for as long as they're going to be there, it seems to me like it's worth the difference to pay for the bronze. So um, I'm still convinced bronze is the way to go. Thank you, and uh, sorry, Peggy. I agree. When I first saw the manufacturing materials and the twenty-two thousand versus eleven, I was like, "Oh no!" But then when you look at cost per inlay, yeah, you know, it's not that big a deal. And like Ruth said, they're going to be there a long time, you know. So I, I definitely see that we there's some justification in going to the using the materials that we had, uh, you know, really chosen. Yeah. Yes, and um, Rich has a lot of examples that are not on the website. So um, as we get closer, I can see if he can give us some additional examples. He had all kinds of examples on his iPad that are just on his iPad. Um, but I can see if he can give us some examples of what what kind of a look these will look like, um, you know, when they're new and in a, in a few years. So I can do that too, just to share with you so you can see that. Great, um, Nancy. Um, just to confirm, so with the iron, there's no way to prevent it from bleeding. Is that correct, Chelsea? Um, that's correct. Yeah, the oil baked finish is what they do to help um, lessen. And what, what he said is it just helps carry it over. It's like taking an ibuprofen so that you just don't quite hurt it as badly while you're trying to recover. Um, it, it's like that. So it doesn't eliminate it. It's still going on. Um, you kind of can't predict if it's going to push through and, you know, so it, you know, okay. it, it's not a permanent thing by any means. It's not going to last forever. So when you see that the pictures of the, the cast iron with the oil baked finish, that that's not a, a permanent thing. It's not going to look like that forever. And um, I actually, I'm going to take this budget down if you're okay, because I have a couple. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see, because I have, um, sure I do, if I can get this to work. I have another here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this, um, I can make this bigger here. So this, he gave me a little a pamphlet. Um, so that, sorry about the scanning, um, but it does show like um, near the top there, the next, like the regular Joe is just a cast iron raw. And to the right of that is with the baked on oil. So the baked on oil does not keep it from having the rusted look. Um, the bottom left, you'll see the ground swell is, is very, very, very orange. Um, and so the baked on oil keeps it from being that orange, 
when you first um, expose it to the elements, but it it still does it still does the same thing. It just sort of lessens it and and slows the process down so that it's not quite as orange in your face, and you know maybe will lessen some of the staining, but it doesn't make the staining go away. Great, thank you. Nancy, did you have? Oh no, okay. Uh, Ruth. Um, I just wanted to ask Amy if at one of our meetings, if Rich could join us um, either virtually or in person, if that'd be possible. Maybe when we get um, the designs a little further along. Yeah, I can ask him to do that. Um, he was really great, very supportive of our project, really excited about it. Um, I will see if he's able to do that. Probably remotely. He just happened to be here, but he does live up um, in the Seattle area. So oh, okay. he's a little further away, but I will ask him if he's able to do that. Yeah, that'd be great. That's a good idea, Ruth. Um, any other questions or comments about this before we wrap up? We're a little over time, so I want to set people free. I'm excited to see a design. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I know I say this a lot, but thank you all so much for all of your work in this committee. Um, I'm not only excited about the direction things are going, but um, it is nice to hear from the artists that we're good people to work with. So thank you all for <laughs> being part of that. Um, so any final updates for the good of the order? Chelsea, I don't know if you have anything before we wrap up. Okay. Um, then our next meeting is... I should know this. Do we have it set officially? I, I think it was the 13th, the 13th. Okay, oh, I should put that on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so then we will meet again on the 13th at 5.30. Um, I will be out of town and I think we're supposed to be meeting in person by then. So I'll just try to join you all um, on a screen if you are all sitting in city hall. Um, yes, Jen. Chelsea, are you sending a calendar invite? Because that, that there, there isn't a calendar invite. No, I didn't send one because we were trying to solidify what we were actually doing with the meetings and such. Okay. That's why it's not sent out. But yes, I will. Okay. But yeah, just a reminder to the group that the city council did vote to resume in person mm -hmm. meetings for not just the council, but all committees. Um, so if you are not able to make it to City Hall, make sure you send um, the city recorder an email beforehand so they can share um, virtual meeting information because if no one needs to do it virtually then they don't have to worry about it um, but if you do need to do it virtually just make sure you send them an email beforehand um, any questions on that i probably can't answer but chelsea might be able to <laughs> so yes um, so then i think that's it for today um, thank you all again this felt great tonight i'm really looking forward to seeing um, the other designs, and I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. We'll see you again on the 13th. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.